Hey, Julian Kraus here, and on popular demand, here I got the PreSonus Studio 24C interface. Let's have a closer look. Let's dive right in and check out the hardware first. On the front, you will find two XLR and TRS combo inputs. As you would expect, the XLR connection is used as a mic input, and the TRS connection is a line level slash instrument input. In the middle, you got a small level meter, which shows the audio levels for your in and outputs. Sadly, this meter is not granular enough to precisely set your recording level, and it works more as a rough level indicator. That said, I think it is still better than not having any level meter at all. Further to the right you will find a whole bunch of dials. You got two dials to control the gain for the two inputs. You also get a mix dial, which lets you adjust how much of the direct monitoring versus how much of the audio from your door you will hear. I always think that this kind of dial is nice to have. Above that, you can find a button, which toggles the phantom power for the microphone inputs. And on the far right, you got a knob to control the main output on the back, and another one to adjust the headphone volume. One thing I want to mention straight away is that I'm not a fan of how PreSonus crammed all the knobs onto the front of the interface. The knobs are very close together, and working with the interface, I found it quite difficult to grab and adjust some settings. Especially the lower ones like the gain dial for channel 2, the mixer dial and the headphone volume knob. So there is some room for improvement here. As the name 24C implies, it got a USB Type-C connector on the back to hook up your interface to your PC. You also got a MIDI in and output and two quarter inch TRS line level outputs. And lastly, you got a quarter inch headphone jack. I just want to point out that on many interfaces the headphone output is on the front and this will be personal preference whether you like to plug in your headphones on the front or the back. Overall, the build quality feels pretty nice. The housing is completely out of metal and especially the sides feel very sturdy. This gives the whole interface quite some heft and that's why it comes in at roughly 870 grams. All the knobs feel very sturdy as well, though out of the box they are quite stiff and as mentioned before, some of them are a bit awkward to turn. Okay, let's dive a bit deeper into the specifications of the 24C and check out the audio quality. The Studio 24C has a maximum sample rate of 192kHz. This means that you should be able to record a wide range of frequencies, even above the human hearing range. I measured the frequency response of the mic input, and as you can see, the 24C has a reasonably flat response, and the response extends all the way up to 80kHz. In the lower frequencies, there is a bit of roll-off, and the response is down by about 1.5 decibels at 20Hz. Like many interfaces, the frequency response of the 24C gets even a bit better when not used at the maximum gain setting. Here the lower frequencies are only down by around half a decibel at 20Hz. Regardless of the gain setting, in the audible range from 20 to 20,000 Hz the frequency response looks pretty decent. Of course, I also checked the distortion behavior and this is pretty interesting. Here you can see the harmonic distortion and I'm not fully satisfied with the performance of the 24C as the third harmonic is around 70 decibels below the fundamental. This isn't terrible by any means, but it is not as good as I would have liked it to see. But this is with the signal close to 0 dBFS. When I set the gain so that I record at a typical minus 12 dBFS, the distortion reduces significantly and is now really low. What does that mean in practice? Well, it means that the distortion in the Studio 24C rises significantly once the signal goes above minus 12 dBFS. And you can see this clearly in the THD plus N versus Amplitude graph. So if you want to get the best performance out of your Studio 24C, you shouldn't record your signal too hot and set your gain so that the level peaks around minus 18 to minus 12 dBFS. By the way, this is how I recommend to record audio anyways, regardless which interface you use. But with the Studio 24C, it is a bit more important how you set your level. Next up, dynamic range. The dynamic range is the difference between the strongest signal the interface can capture and its noise floor. Ideally, the dynamic range should be as high as possible, because this way you can leave yourself a nice amount of headroom without introducing any additional noise. I measured the dynamic range of the 24C and it comes in at 107.1 dBA weighted. This is a decent amount of dynamic range and performance-wise this puts the 24C roughly in the middle of all the interfaces I've tested so far. Okay, let's check out the preamp performance of the 24C and that's why I'm using a Shure SM7B as this microphone is known for its notoriously low sensitivity and this brings out the noise of the preamp. 
So this is pretty much a worst case scenario. Let me be quiet for a second so you can have a listen to the noise floor of this setup. As you could hear, the noise floor is very low and this is not surprising as the preamps in the Studio 24C have an equivalent input noise of minus 129 dBUA weighted. The EIN lets you directly compare the noise of preamps from different interfaces and as you can see, the Studio 24C performs very well. Here's how it compares audibly against some of these interfaces. Now, how about a cloud lifter or fathead? Is there any benefit in using it with the 24C? Well, with such a device, you can only lower the noise by about two more decibels, and in practice, this is hardly noticeable. So from a noise perspective, you do not need a lifter head. One thing to note though, is that the Studio 24C does not have much gain. I would have liked to see a number around 50 here, and this does mean that with a mic like the SM7B, you would max out your gain and your recording level will oftentimes still be on the lower side. That's usually not a big problem as you can simply apply a bit of digital gain to bring the recording up to a proper level, but if you don't want to do that, an inline preamp is a valid purchase. With 1.5 kilo ohm, the mic input impedance of the 24C is a bit on the lower side, but under normal recording conditions, I highly doubt that this affects your recording. So forget that I mentioned it. You might still wonder about the line slash instrument input on the Studio 24C and how they perform. Actually, they perform very nicely and provide a dynamic range of 107 dBA as well. They also have a very flat frequency response, even outside the audible range. And in my tests, they also showed a minimal amount of distortion. Okay, let's talk about the audio outputs of the 24C. I measured the frequency response of the line level outputs on the back and as you can see, it is very flat even outside the audible range and exactly what you want to see. Of course, I also checked the distortion and as you can see at the maximum output, all harmonics are at least 110 decibels below the fundamental. And while I was on it, here you can see the THD plus N versus amplitude and THD plus N versus frequency graphs. All in all, the main output of the 24C provides an excellent performance and this makes the Studio 24C a very good deck for your studio monitors. For the headphone output performance, I've gathered all the important measurements in a table and this lets you directly compare all the tested results with other interfaces. As you can see, the frequency response is very flat, all the way from 10Hz up to 40kHz. Sadly, the output impedance of the amp is quite high with 22 ohms. This means that when you use low impedance headphones with this interface, it can result in an audible change in the frequency response and thus change the sound of your headphones. So with the Studio 24C, it is best to stick to headphones with 80 or 150 ohms. And you also don't want to go too high as the 24C does not deliver that much power into very high impedance headphones. Something like the Sennheiser HD 5X Axis will work very nicely, but higher impedance headphones probably won't get loud enough for you. The distortion figures are very low, regardless if you use low or high impedance headphones, and the noise performance is also really good. So with over-ear headphones, it is highly unlikely that you'll ever encounter any distortion or noise. The channel balance with plus or minus 1 dB is also pretty decent, meaning that regardless where you set your gain at, the left and right channel will always have the same amplitude. And the crosstalk figure is also very low, which is key to getting a nice stereo separation and stereo image. If you're interested, here are some more graphs of THD plus N versus power and amplitude. All in all, I can say that the headphone output quality is quite decent, and if the output impedance would have been a bit lower, this would have been an excellent performance. I also want to shortly show my measured round trip latencies of the Studio 24C. The RTL is important to not perceive any delay in the audio from your DAW. Here are the times I got with 48kHz. And here with 192kHz. Quick note, with 192kHz, the driver did not let me select a buffer size that is lower than 64. Keep in mind that the buffer size and sample rate heavily affects the RTL, 
And so this is more of a rough guideline what you're able to achieve with the Studio 24C. One last feature that shouldn't go unnoticed is the loopback function. This allows you to record audio that your PC is putting out and this can be very handy if you want to record the audio from your PC while simultaneously recording the audio from a mic that's plugged into the interface. So what do I think of the PreSonus Studio 24C? I think it's a nice little interface. It got low noise mic preamps and a decent amount of dynamic range. Linear and nonlinear distortions on all the in and outputs are also very low. The only things that could be improved are the high output impedance of the headphone amp, the rising distortion on the mic input above minus 12 dBFS and the physical layout on the front as all the buttons are very close together and a bit fiddly to use. Nothing more to say than that the PreSonus Studio 24C is a decent interface. If you like, you can support my independent audio testing on Patreon. Please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you all in the next one.